First question. Sit up. You're slouching. Am I slouching? I'm not, I'm not a sitter. I'm not a like a sit up type of guy though. Yeah. Avion, Blackman. Take one. <laughs> so where do I start? 50 states in 12 months. Here we go. for Austin is chicken catching. Really driving by feet and not by sight right now. Take a look at this. Uh, tropical storm is hitting Rhode Island right now. We're getting out of this. We're getting out of this place right now. I want the world to know that I'm still here. When we felt God calling us to minister in this country, it took um, it took it took a big faith to say, "Are you sure, God? And if so, I'll go." But what vehicles? Your vehicles, <laughs> okay? Well, we have an SUV and a minivan. I I just started praying about it. And one of our supporters said, I heard what you're doing. I heard that you're uh, <laughs> you're going out to the nation, and this nation needs it. And here's $100,000. Get an RV. I wasn't sure how the band was going to take it. My first God was like, are you crazy? That is insane. Cuckoo. Mark came home with this giant map this giant laminated map, and he's telling us to clear this section of the wall, take all the all the pins out, and he pins it up, and he starts just frantically drawing these zigzags and lines from state to state, and explaining to me how we're gonna get there and what we're gonna do. And I think my first thought was, oh my gosh, I'm the tour manager for this tour? We go from here? to crazy, from crazy to chaos, from chaos to madness, from madness to I'm leaving the bands to these are now my best friends to this is the longest six months that's really nine months that feels like 90 months of my life to this is the best time of my entire life to we didn't just have the best time of our entire life, we saw hundreds let's say thousands, let's pray for tens of thousands of souls saved. I didn't see how it was gonna be possible. I didn't think we were gonna make it, you know? And when we stepped out and left California, we literally had four shows on the books. How in the world are we going to do all 50 states with only four shows? Drive east. That was the simple assignment I had. Driving through Vegas, check it out. Over there is the 
the strip. We're looking for bold, brave churches that want to reach people in this city. We reached out to churches all throughout Vegas, and this is one of the only ones brave enough. They put us on, look at this, yeah, uh huh, little trailer. Okay, it's hitched onto here. Where are you at, Justin? Right here, oh, down there, on that truck. That truck. Oh my gosh. America has definitely gone through a lot. Especially with the gas prices and the tension around this country. But we are here to just encourage the people of this nation and to try to bring it back under God. By the second half of the tour, we started seeing tent cities pop up everywhere. We started seeing tents on the side of the streets. People living on the freeway, under a freeway, on the sides of the roads, even in cold places like Colorado or Montana. I have not seen this many homeless people. Drug addiction has been a huge issue. Homelessness, joblessness. Our partners on NBC LA's investigative team have captured these images showing a situation spiraling out of control. Trash spilling into traffic, tents taking over intersections, stretches of the iconic Venice boardwalk now resembling a refugee camp. This is a different America than what I grew up with. So we set out to do homeless outreaches. We partner with the Salvation Army who feeds in numerous locations all around the nation. Christ Safari goes on at 7.30 sharp. Join us. Tickets are only $10, and the money doesn't go to us. It goes to a rescue mission in the area. All right, you were saying some things to me earlier today about, about how significant this is. Tell me, uh, tell me what kind of ministry happened today and, um, and why this was significant. So we at the Parrots Foundation uh, serve a meal every night out of the trailer that's behind you, give out clothes. We used to have a, a spot across town. And so we're, we're trying to reach the lost folks in this community. And we thank you for coming because this is a great, music brings people together. Mm -hmm. And you got people here that's harder for me to get. Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> you having a band. So yeah. it, it's just a blessing to have you here and to, uh, to worship with us. This is a very unchurched neighborhood, lots of violence, gang activity, really? drug deals. Um, in our part of the world here, this, it's a pretty rough place. And, and folks in here are looking for hope. And a lot of folks outside in the community are trying to bring some for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our mission. Amen. Jesus put us where he would be. All right, 36 and 30. Nobody else at the time we left was even touring in America, let alone doing an extensive tour. You see, the gospel is to be preached in season and out of season. And in some places right now, it's really been out of season, but that shouldn't stop the presentation of the greatest news on earth. America need Jesus, America need love. The same way my culture needs Jesus, my culture needs love. So we just started driving and 
we saw God provide. Where others were scared to say yes to us when we were so far away, when they found out we were just a state away or in the same town, they're like, come on out. I caught wind that y'all were doing a tour and I reached out through the app Bandits in Town and Facebook, both, and said, hey, listen, you need to come to Corpus Christi. Get it, get it. I had this pie in the sky dream of seeing this massive revival just follow us everywhere. But it was more so individuals being impacted. I saw many bring their lives under God. Did you enjoy it tonight? Yeah. What was your favorite part? Everything. Everything! I'll make sure tomorrow or next time we play everything! I witnessed my six year old daughter give her life to Christ tonight. She said this in his prayer. What? Yes. This is That's good! Thank you so much. This is this good. Is what amazing. is her name? My name is Miguel. And, and her name is Selah? Selah, yes. You gave your life to Jesus tonight? Yeah. Give me your bunks. Boom! Today is a very special day because MJ and Selah prayed the sinner's prayer today. I committed my life to Christ today, and this was a celebration. Thank you. Thank you. I come back from a show <laughs> to the vehicle and uh, about ready to drive off, and I see this on the windshield says mark and company thanks always for a great show i met you tonight and i wish i had told you more but i know you're busy i had a similar past to you christian turned rasta turned pot smoker although i didn't deal i gave it away for free ha my parents gave me a cd of yours around 16 years ago i loved the music but for years it sat collecting dust you know why the lyrics convicted me all caps I knew I was hiding with my constant weed smoking. I was lost. But every time I heard your music, I felt God pull me in tighter. After eight years of a constant haze, I quit. Praise God. And now I've been sober for seven years. Since then, your music has helped me through my ups and downs. I may no longer have the long hair and smoke weed, but I still love reggae. I'm a Christafarian. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. God bless you, and your family, and your band. Isaac Hall. See, this makes driving 25,000 miles so far so worth it. I'm sick and tired of this drug addiction, Lord. I, I don't want to be involved in it anymore. The fast money, the the the... Anything the attention it brings, Lord, I don't want it anymore, Lord. I, 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 I'm a new grandpa, Lord. My, my kids don't talk to me because I chose that first order, and I don't want to lose any more and cause any more pain that I've done any. I don't want to do it no more, Father. I don't want it no more. Jesus, what can we do? Heal him. Yes. Heal his soul. Jesus. Heal him. Bring him back together with his family. I was, I was um, really depressed and I was about to go in, so I went, um, injected some heroin and drank some meth bong water, four ounces of it, and I was on uh, life support um, for, for about um, an hour or two, and then they're about to pull the plug on me. But you're still here. Yes, I'm still here because of God. Thank, thank the Lord. And what, what happened last night? Last night, I I gave myself to Jesus last night. God is so good, dude. Thank you so much. And he said that he's committed. He's gonna to go to celebrate recovery, and he realizes he can't do it on his own. And you gotta have a great support system.
one of my favorite stories in the last year has been going to Florida and meeting Danielle. Danielle came up to us and you could tell she was shy, but she basically said that, that you're the first Christian concert I'm going to, first Christian band I've listened to. She'd gone to many churches to protest as a higher up in the atheist community. She was one of the most anti-Christian people that I knew, but when I saw her, there was something about her. It seemed like God was doing something in her heart. And I wish we could do this with every single fan, but we, we got her number and we started communicating with her. Multiple band members were praying for her, encouraging her to go to a church, encouraging her to read the Bible, to listen to this tape, to do this, to do that. And we started to see a transformation. But every time we saw her taking this step forward for God, we would then see the enemy just like do this horrible, wicked thing against her. And so all her friends were atheists. And then, sure enough, when she started telling them about us, she started losing her friends. And so these same friends said we're disowning her. She can't see her God child anymore. She can't this, she can't that. And I was like, all the more reason for us to be there for her. She started listening to Christian radio and, and they, she heard about this concert. And so she's like, hey, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna call. And she, she won tickets. She tells me, hey, Mark, I can't believe it. I won tickets to a concert. I'm like, really? Cool, where? She's like, Tennessee. I'm like, when? She's like, July. I'm like, we're gonna be there in July. What is it? Life Fest? No. I'm like, we're gonna be there. Just outside of Nashville, about 30 some odd miles. Johnny Cash used to live here. Doing a big musical festival here right now. And I'm super excited about it. It's called Life Fest Music City. Tonight we're opening up for the Newsboys. And I'm really excited. Oh my gosh, this is what really excites me though. How you doing? How are, you I'm doing? Hot. How are you? We meet up with her backstage. Get a chance to introduce her to the newsboys, to some other artists. And uh, then, sure enough, take her to the car and say, You remember that conversation we were trying to have on the phone when you got pulled over by the cop? Would you like to receive Jesus? Yes. <laughs> I am so yeah. excited. I'm so so excited. I'm so happy. And she prayed the prayer right there. I need you. I need you. I can't do it on my own. I can't do it on my own. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come inside. Come inside. Fill me. Fill me. Take control. Take control. Give me heaven. Give me heaven. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. I will be living. I will be living. For you. For you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <So excited. laughs> We came all that way, 25 states, just to lead an atheist to Christ. Worth it. So worth it. I've, I've accepted the Lord as my Savior long ago fell in and out with them, but uh, I'm, I'm through backsliding, I'm walking with them. And tonight, with Christ Safari playing, I felt as close to heaven as I've ever felt in my life. Um, I just felt free. But Christ Safari just brings me to worship every time I listen, and it's just the most amazing experience. Four years ago, I have, that's my second time I have a concert. But when I I can I can pray and I can say anything only the song that she's she's saying that Yeshua that's my prayer that's um, very strong and God bless you and thank you so much for everything and now we are family we are together uh, thank you Jesus we are Sana, praise God yeah, so the song Yeshua helped you get through yeah. cancer yeah.
We changed by being humbled. We changed by realizing that we're not doing this for the big audience. We're doing this for the audience of one. And, and of course, the ones, the individuals in the audience. There were times where uh, we'd play a show in, you know, Mississippi. And I'd be like, man, there's eight people. We drove all the way out here for this. God, I'm doing this for you. <laughs> and then that person would come up. That lady who had just been through a divorce, depression, who had just been through the ringer and said, you came all the way out here for me. You guys were a rock to me. And you gave me hope. And you gave me faith. And it is just so amazing to see you all here. Yeah, we did come all the way out here for this, for her. And that was the wake-up call. And so I was looking for those people at every single show. It didn't matter how small the show. In fact, if it was a smaller show, it was easier to find that person. You came out for me. I was going to kill myself, a lady said. And now I'm not going to. Oh, snap. That small show with... 30 or 50 people in Oklahoma, all of a sudden became a necessity. It wasn't just checking off a state on the map. It was changing the state of somebody's heart, the state of somebody's relationship with God. And that was priceless. Being able to fill up each one of those territories with a photo, with an image of <laughs> something that happened there, somebody impacted and to know that all these images created this mosaic this this kind of tapestry that just demonstrates god's love god's faithfulness god is able to do so much more than we could ever imagine when we put our faith in him our trust in him and align our vision and mission with his heart and the great commission stage is being set up right now main stage you just gave us an extra two minutes man maybe we can squeeze some back into that oh that's great i'm done with the hiding this is Reed Saunders. You're going to give the gospel? That's right. Good news to Jesus, baby. Can't wait. It's going to be awesome. One of the things that adds some nice flavor to a tour is when somebody else joins you for a show or a leg, when you get to share the stage with somebody, and then when you get to have fellowship with them, break some bread with them. Artists like George Moss, who we were really inspired by our conversations, we encouraged him to become a full-time missionary and to join our missions organization. Hey, this is Mark Moore with Christ Safari here with George Moss. He's not only a hip-hop artist, rapper, but he's a lover of Jesus. He's an evangelist. He has a heart for the Lord and for serving the Lord. It was an incredible time of fellowship for artists like Zante and his whole crew to sit down and have a meal with them and encourage them to continue to preach the gospel, encourage them to not chase after the honorarium, but chase after anything that honors God. Man, iron sharpening iron. To hang out with the newsboys and do a few shows with them and then be encouraged to do a reggae version of He Reigns. Those things wouldn't have happened if we didn't just take a step of faith and say, we're going to do all the states. As we travel nonstop, it's always a challenge to do anything, but it's a greater challenge trying to put a studio together and to have songwriting sessions. But when we do, it's an amazing moment. This is Times setting up a studio in the hotel. Nikita and Ziza eagerly awaiting what we're going to record today, which is a song called, I Won't Comply. <laughs> no, I, I won't comply. No, I. I won't 
don't comply. Eye is falling. No eye. No eye. No eye. No eye. No eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Mark and Times are very quick to grab an opportunity, record with a, with a guest artist, um, or just record wherever they can on the road for an idea that Mark's got. When he's inspired, there's no stopping it. So they've recorded in closets, they've recorded in hotel rooms, usually in a closet, a lot of closets. So I wrote this song about a week ago in Montana now. We're here in Boise, Idaho. Recording the vocal. The second I'm done with this vocal, I'm going off to film the music video for it. Oh gosh. Hey, right here. This year, we've barely recorded at home. Almost everything has been on the go. We don't have to take dedicated time to just record, but we can record and also minister at the same time so we can accomplish more. All this place we go, I have, ex uh, I have with me, I can bring with me when I record these songs. When I listen to these songs ready again, I can remember their place. I can remember the situation. So, so be recorded on the road. I think you guys are gonna hear, you guys are gonna feeling the feelings for each place. Ministry tonight in a Navajo reservation. We got this gig two days ago. God is good, he's providing. We're in Arizona and we're in New Mexico. Welcome to Norman, Oklahoma. It's a beautiful day here in Texas. We are no longer in the desert. When you go to David's tent in Washington, D.C., I think that is pretty much the, the hub of spiritual warfare. It is a beautiful Wednesday evening, almost 6 p.m., which means we're about ready to take the stage. Not there, but there. That's right, in David's tent. And what are we celebrating today? 2,000 days straight of perpetual praise without a moment of silence in between. I remember getting to David's tent that day thinking that this is this is gonna be easy. I went into it with a very, I've got this attitude. Everything was set up, everything was perfect, and we were ready to go. When the show started, um, there, was, there was no sound. And suddenly, I hear this really loud noise, and it was the click track in the mains. And I just remember sitting there and going, Ugh. All of these problems just kind of erupted at one time. And it was Jason, our sound engineer, well, his first show without training wheels, if you will. Oh man, <laughs> he was running around like a chicken with his head cut off. But we quickly had to learn to adjust. The music had to continue because it was perpetual praise. Seven years of perpetual praise. We didn't want to be the ones who broke that cycle. I ended up jumping on the grand piano and we just played a few songs acoustically until the sound was fixed. I remember hearing God and talking to God and God telling me, you know, this is still glorifying to me, right? These things will go wrong, but every, every action that we do that is intentionally in worship to God will be glorifying to Him. So we improvised and that began this beautiful dance of awkwardness that 
has been this year. Testing out new songs on stage for the very first time without ever having practiced them. Without ever having written them, writing them on stage. I think the very first time we ever sing the song Under God should be in this chapter. Here's the problem. The band doesn't know it yet because most of them haven't heard it. But I have the lyrics. I don't really know what I'm doing, but I figure you guys will forgive me if I do something wrong because you've never heard the song. So I'm going to stand right over here. And anybody, if you guys can come over and at least read your lyrics, I have them on my WhatsApp. You know what? I'm going to share them on WhatsApp to everybody else in the band. We are the underdogs. But we are under God. When we were filming the music video for Stepping Out of Babylon, we were at an abandoned water park. All I do is pull, right? And uh, as I'm singing about how Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy, <laughs> I hear via phone that uh, one of the tires had blown out on the trailer. Whew. So we're here, Lake Dolores, water park, filming, stepping out of Babylon, step out of darkness into the light. We get a call from the guy saying that there's a major blowout. The trailer's on its rim, 20 minutes away. AAA can't help us. They're frantically trying to figure out how to get two new tires to the back of the trailer. We're trying to get the last shots before the sun sets. Iris comes up to me saying that our minivan has been broken into. They broke two windows. I'm like, what? I don't know what they stole. And later I found out that they stole the first part of this documentary. They stole the first few states. They stole stuff that we couldn't get back. Which meant that we had to retrace our steps a bit. If we ever wanted to have a music video for Under God, we would have to go back to Washington, D.C. Driving through the National Mall right now. The first time we ever played here was Washington for Jesus. About 400,000 people there. Look, that's the Lincoln Memorial right there. This time, it's going to be much smaller, much more intimate. On the day that we played our show, it was raining. And we were in a covered tent, so it wasn't, it wasn't too bothersome. But about 10 minutes before our set ended, we all get notifications on our phones that say tornado warning. As we're getting to the last verse of the song, um, it, the wind starts picking up more and more, and the tent starts bending in towards us. Lights are flying everywhere, and there's a TV above us, and it's like shaking. It came up out of nowhere. The support for the tent was buckling, and people started to worship like even louder. And people were still dancing and praising, praising Jesus when the bars were actually like turning, and the tent, like, it almost fell down. So I'm just standing there, seeing this tent fall in on itself. And I remember praying like, Lord, you coming for me now? And I was like, you know, like, this, is, this is a good moment, you know, to die worshiping. As I watched everything shake around me, I literally said, God, I trust you. I, I kept playing my, my keyboard with all this craziness happening. I'm like, okay, God, if I go tonight, I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. I will keep playing my guitar. I will keep praising you. I keep. I will keep worshiping. Please take care of my wife. Take care of my family. If my time is gone now, I've been to have. While we were feverishly praying, fervently supplicating to the Lord to change our nation, to change our the heart of our leader, literally a tornado. Started right on top of David's tent, sat there 
and then moved down National Mall towards the White House. A week later, we go online and we just do some research and find out that it was a confirmed tornado that passed over our venue. When I saw the outside where there was rain and wind and all this chaos, I just felt peace because I knew who was with me and I knew that God was going to sustain us. I knew that he was gonna provide in some way, somehow. He provides, provides peace. He provides everything that we need in that moment. God was just doing something within us and showing us that he is with us even though it can be chaotic at times, even though life can be chaotic at times. What do you hope to bring to the beautiful people of Valdez? Suicide and other things stop happening. Oh, amen. Joy. Joy. Love. Love. Peace. Peace. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Encouragement. Reggae music. <coughs> Reggae music. <laughs> As we move forward and travel to Valdez, I ask that you would prepare our hearts to minister to the people there and allow us to be a blessing to them. Give us safe travels. And uh, I ask that you would promote unity in this group. And that is all. Amen. Let me hear you say. Amen. 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 We were flying out to Alaska. Long flight, all night. We get there. Then we have to drive for hours. And a bumpy bus with no shocks. And the ride back. My wife was sitting in an awkward way <sighs> and just so many bumps next thing we know she's reaching down to plug in our inflatable air mattresses which is how we roll as musicianaries and <gasps> she can't get up she can't move it was like she was paralyzed but in agonizing pain crying weeping I'm like, what do I do? To help her up is to cause even greater excruciating pain, but she can't stay down there. I remember when she had her first spasm, when she like was stuck. Um, I was like, I, I, can't, I did not want to see her in that pain, so I had to run out of the room. And I was just crying. This is a vulnerable moment. Last night, my wife threw out her back, or something, and um, could not move. It took her a very long time to even be able to be pulled up from on her knees where she was fixing a bed. That was really, really tough, because I felt um, helpless, I guess is the word. I couldn't do anything on my own, so I had to rely on and people to take me to the bathroom or whatever I want to do, I couldn't move. I was so worried about her because the whole team feels it when somebody is out. <sighs> There's a first for everything in the last 18 years. I haven't had to do uh, a ministry time without Avion before. Oh, today was the first Sunday morning that we did without Avion. It wasn't easy. We got creative. Ziza just officially sang the lead parts that her mother would normally do. This ministry is so dependent on Avion and what she does and the, the mother that she is for all of us. So we were celebrating in early October that we had gone nine months without <laughs> getting COVID. It was a miracle. And then lo and behold, Justin is, um, he's extra tired during our downtime in Idaho. And he sleeps for like 24 hours. Like, are you okay? Yeah, I'm just tired. By day three of that, we're like, you know what? Let's, let's take a COVID test. We have these COVID tests, man, we've taken so many of them this year just to be safe you know we give them the test and 
sure enough, he's got COVID, but it, it's worse. He's short of breath. We called the doctors and our tour doctors, we have two of them, both said, take him to the hospital right now. And Justin was, wow. He was not liking this. He was like, I, I, I don't want to go to the doctor. No, 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 I'm good. I'm good. I'll be fine. I don't want to go to the hospital. They're like, uh, the doctor said you got to go. We're taking you to the ER. It's like, please don't take me to the ER. I don't want to check into the hospital. I don't want to die. I don't say this lightly, but I was honestly scared for my life. And I even told my team, I don't want to die tonight. I was the one who took him to the hospital and I was told I couldn't go in with him. And I knew his oxygen levels and I knew that he was at the point to where he was, he could have sustained serious brain damage. Good morning from Boise, Idaho in a hospital bed. Last night I was in, last night I was in no, no shape to speak. I kind of shouldn't even be talking right now, but I want the world to know that I'm still here. And I'm not gonna give up. Should we stay in town? We'll stay in Idaho and and we'll cancel some shows and wait for you? He's like, no, you can't do that. The gospel has to be preached. He was still on oxygen, and he told us we needed to keep moving. Today, we're driving from Idaho to Seattle. such such a blessing to see him. This morning, I really want to celebrate something. Our keyboardist, Justin Kelly, the local guy in Nalimo for Hero Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. I want to celebrate his emancipation day. He got out of the hospital with pneumonia. When he was being checked in, he was really scared. Is this it? And we were, well, in this era, nobody can even visit you in the hospital. And it was really, really tough. God's call is directly correlated. It's woven in, it's braided together with the fact that we must endure hardships as Christians. Consider it pure joy when we do so. Knowing that this will give us perseverance, this will give us endurance, this will make us pure and complete, lacking in nothing. But we cannot extricate, we cannot separate and say, no, 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 serving God will be luxury and plush. I will always get the king size bed with the, with the pillow top. I will always get my own private bathroom. I will always get, no, no, no. We're gonna be sharing that king size bed. <laughs> <laughs> with a dingy mattress with somebody else sometimes. Sometimes you won't always get the meal. Sometimes you won't always get what you want. And again, it's, it's that at any cost. And today I want to hear from you guys what your cost has been. Well, I guess, I guess overall, um, rest. Rest is always a challenge. Yeah, and then, um, also, different environments because I have so much allergies. I get sick a lot. I'm always fighting it. You know, I'm always, my body's always fighting to not get sick. And most of the time when I get sick, it affects my lungs, so that affects my voice. So that has been a, a real struggle for me. I really love eating healthy. So, yeah, the hardest is eating a meal and then telling myself. Well, at least you have a meal, even though I don't enjoy it. Not being able to take part in the lives that are going on back home. 
and I miss it a lot. Not having friends around me and not being able to play with like people. So there's moments where I'm around people but I can feel so alone. Relatable with many people. I, I love what I do but I wouldn't wish the life of loneliness um, upon anyone. I'm walking through grieving my best friend's death. And 20 minutes ago, as we were taking a pit stop, I was going through my voicemail because I knew Aaron always left messages. The last message she left was the prayer I needed today. He just said, Lord, I just pray for Justin's strength and his energy right now. And I just ask you to lift him up right now. Lift up his spirits. I said, okay, God, I hear you. And that's why I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm hurt, I'm broken, but I'm very happy to be here in Alaska because I already know God is just going to use this place and these people to help me stand back up. The thing that, that has been toughest for me overall is just been checking the pulse of everybody. I wish that Iris had more time with her mother. I wish that Justin could go to his best friend's funeral. I wish that you could be there with your parents on your 21st, you know? I wish that you could be there for your graduation. I wish that you weren't alone, and I hope that someday you realize you're not alone. God has given me this ginormous vision that is the craziest thing ever. And to see you guys say yes, but then see those moments where you're like, this is too much. It's tough on me because I know you're suffering worse. And, um, and I wish that I could just fix it all. You know, I wish that I could just press the easy button and make everything easy. But I'm just reminded of this passage. Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Does that passage ring in a different way now? The calling is forever woven together with the sacrifice. God didn't promise that it was going to be easy. You can't expect a servant to be treated better than his king. And so we took it in stride. The number one phrase that I heard people say when we had that opposition was, we are musicianaries. I'm a missionary. My hardest time, my hardest time, my rock bottom. It, that is tough. That is tough to say. Um, Lord. All right, help me here. Help me here. Um... Give me the words. A big portion of my job as a pastor is shepherding and leading, is discipleship. A big portion of what we do in this ministry is ministering to people who have fallen and picking them up. And um, the greatest opposition we faced this year came from within well actually it came from the enemy trying to pull down and successfully pulling down somebody from within someone whom I love dearly like a son someone whom I think is just one of the best representations of this ministry with his heart with his passion with his work ethic with his attitude but something was just eating at Marcus. 
trying to gather trying to just trying to find out even where to begin like truly a rock bottom um, probably lying and hurting people around me and needing to come forward with that and I think it was in Alaska where Marcus confessed that he'd fallen I knew that he had a past a past with marijuana and drugs I knew that he had a past with struggling with other things the hardest part was obviously hurting that friendship hurting my trust with leadership hurting my trust with my band you know my band with my friends with my family with my family back in Missouri and with my family here in California you know my band family I saw in Marcus somebody who had genuinely known that he had fallen and wanted to get out but didn't know how to. It was like somebody tangled in this web and it, it was a tough thing to untangle. I know that I know that I've been saved. I know that I've been Sanctified. I know God has helped me work out my salvation for you know, as long as I've been following him truthfully. But there's still some stuff. There's still some baggage. And that got to me and got to a point where I had to make a decision if I was going to stay here or if I was going to move on from this band. All of us are susceptible to failure. People want to call it moral failure. I think that's just a, a pretty way to nice up the word sin. And I think that sin needs to be... Sin needs to be... Uh, I think that sin needs to be cut out. But what people typically do in ministries or churches is when somebody falls, they just kick the person out. And when they kick the person out, that person just runs to the very sin that they're trying to repent of. Dealing with it, you know, it was, it was tough. But we clearly heard that God says to invest in him. And especially seeing that he, it was a struggle for him. If somebody sins and they repent, you keep them within and you disciple and you mentor and you encourage and you build an accountability system while some would just say just throw them out and get rid of get rid of them bring in somebody else i can't throw away somebody that god is not done with i can't throw away somebody that isn't done with god so they've worked with me and sanctified me day by day it's been it's been a walk and there's been seasons of victory for sure and there's been times where I've slid back and my, my conscience is so guilty and I have to talk to somebody about it and when I have they've, they've redeemed me, they've helped build me back up and so far it's been a tremendous success it hasn't been easy there's been tough moments but the process of sanctification is never easy but it's something we must do, and I must do, as a pastor. The whole Marcus sin issue just hit us, blindsided us. But it also reminded us that this is our mission. Now, we can't preach at a rehab center every other day. I can't be talking about how God delivered me from drug addiction, from having sex before marriage from all these different things that I was falling in I can't talk about that and preach that without being able to help somebody from within be reconciled with God and with others and that's what Christianity is seeing how God worked in his heart and he's just like even on his countenance everything um, seeing him mature and get out of this was a blessing to see. No one is 
too far from temptation or from uh, the, no one's too far from the devil's reach in that sense, you know I should say but, but yeah, now are you going to choose like if you're set free if the shackles are off are you going to choose to continue to sit in that prison or are you going to choose to walk out because the door is open the shackles are off and now you got to choose to walk out of your own you got to choose to walk out of your own prison Jesus has brought him through and he's in a place of victory and God is great isn't he oh, I appreciate my Lord and Savior for keeping me in the palm of his hands even when, uh, every time I try to jump, you know, it snatch you right back up if you let him. If you let him. So I pray that all of you guys would let him do the same every season of your life. So, so it's never too late. And uh, if he could hold me under there for a few extra seconds. He wants me to hold him down for a little while. <laughs> I'm really going to do it. He needed some extra washing. <laughs> It's my privilege, Marcus, to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' holy and precious name. We love you, Lord. Amen. Finished the program just like I promised. I'm like, good. What happened after that? He said, Do you remember afterwards how you prayed for me that I would get my family back? I did. God, I get Jesus bumps just think about it. Look at those things. You're a giant. I said, what, ha what, what happened? Was I got back together with my wife. I got my kids back. I said, What are you doing here? I'm going to Bible college. I'm studying to be a pastor. And now he is a pastor. Would you be that guy? And he comes up to me and says, Hey, Mark, that was the best decision I ever made. My whole life changed. And maybe I won't see you here. Maybe I'll see you there. But I need you to know that you're going to be there. After praying that prayer, now the next step is obedience. It's, it's not works to keep this faith. It's a relationship that you want to keep a good harmony with. Read, pray, go to church, share your faith. But beyond that, guys, understand that you are loved by us. You are loved by others. You are loved most of all by God. Amen. But you are hated by Satan. Jesus is the way. He's the truth. Is the life. Satan wants to steal from you. And he's stolen so much. Don't give him any more. He wants to kill. And he wants to destroy. And that's what brought you here. Those three things have already happened in your life. Jesus doesn't want to steal. He wants to give eternal life. He wants to give abundant life. God was greater than all of the challenges that we faced. And God <laughs> refined us through this opposition. And ultimately, that helped define us and purify us as a band. We are not afraid to talk about the sin issues that the band members have come out of in the past. And I think it allows us to connect with people in the crowd that have similar testimonies 
On this stage and on our team, we have people who have been, who've come out of some tough things. Child molestation. They've been molested as a child. Raped, date raped. People who got pregnant as a teenager and didn't know Jesus and made a horrible mistake of killing that child through abortion and having to deal with that when they now have come to Christ. People who tried to kill themselves, cutters, suicide. Two people on that truck tried to kill themselves. One climbed over the edge of the bridge and was about ready to jump. We have people who struggled with same-sex addiction, people who would have considered themselves bisexual or homosexual, but are straight now through Jesus Christ. It's possible. It is possible. People who had sex before marriage, people like myself, who it started with alcohol, then marijuana, then cocaine, then crack, then crystal meth. We have a past, and we say we were, but now we are saints, believe it or not. Not because of our work, but because of Christ's work on the cross. When we allow our stories to be put up front and say, hey, I'm not carrying my past on my sleeve, like shame, shame, shame. No, God doesn't condemn. But it also allows people in the audience to see, wow, transformation is possible. Wow, being completely made new and healed is possible. These are all my pieces that were broken, but this is what Jesus did, he restored. And as he restored, he also called everyone uniquely into mission for him to represent him to become an ambassador for christ just praise you for this opportunity this privilege to serve you this honor even even though we're missing a few limbs it seems like right now father god to be able to uh, play with all of our hearts and um, to see hearts turn to you father may many people come to you tonight in jesus name amen, amen. I get to see hundreds of people, sometimes in one day, raise their hands and pray the sinner's prayer. This, this is what it's all about right now. All these people coming in, saying that they just surrendered their lives to Christ. We've got follow-up tables here. There is no better way to end a 50-state tour than this kind of harvest. Getting to see all these people saved, getting to see all these people come to Jesus, come to Christ, seeing all these people turn their life over and, and turn their life around at some of these shows and just being able to to see that, see that progress and hear from these people weeks and months down the road and hearing the change that they've had in their life. For every single state, there was a story. There was a person who we met. There was a, a life impacted. There was that one person who was going to commit suicide and then she comes to our show in Oklahoma, or that one person who was depressed and came to our show in Mississippi. God used this tour in so many mighty ways. God taught me that he's faithful. And that when he says something should happen, there's no stopping it. And I'm gonna bring the, 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 the world renowned the pioneers, the veterans, the superstars in the kingdom. Y'all ain't say nothing, man. I'm gonna keep going until I get the energy I need. You know, for decades holding it down, played in the in the in the places where nobody would go to the upper echelon. Tremendous musician, paving the way for many. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know this band. And you've been blessed by this band. I want you to stand up on your feet. Put your hands together. And you know the band, Christ the Fire!
this. This is where it all began. Route 66. Here in Williams, Arizona, a year and a half ago, Christophari left California. It started right here. Now a year and a half later, we've done 50 states, done a little victory lap, and we're heading back to California. Two hundred and seventy seven shows later, bro. We survived, bro. You did, dude. A it's year a ago time. a year ago it was uh touch and go. Love you man. Proud of you, dude. It's been proud of you, man. Oh, God's been good. You guys have been good. It's been a good journey. Really mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah. A lot of investment and still a lot long ways to go. So thank you. Thank you for this guy. For times, yeah.